Good evening. This is Helen Mirren saying welcome to the Graham Norton Show. <laughs> Thank you, that's very kind of you. Now, the weather may be cold, Ooh, a bit cold, but, but the January holiday adverts have started. Oh, so excited. I can't decide which shithole country to visit first. <laughs> um, yes, uh, Donald, Donald's in trouble again. Uh, he's alleged to have used that word in reference to certain foreign countries. Yeah, but it's all cleared up now. Donald Trump has now explained exactly what shithole he was referring to. Yeah. <laughs> President Trump also released the results of his medical exam this week. Uh, Trump has been given the all clear in a medical report. Uh, yes, uh, apparently he's glowing with health. <laughs> Literally glowing with health. It's like a nuclear power station. <laughs> The doctors did notice a small problem with Trump's artery wall. But the good news is the Mexicans are going to pay for it. <laughs> UK leader Henry Bolton has been under pressure to dump his model girlfriend because of racist texts she sent. Woo, you know things are bad if you're too racist for the UKIP leader. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, here are the lovely couple. Now, as you can see, she is partial to a heavy sweater. <laughs> <laughs> she should go out with Boris. <laughs> Secret. But first, he terrified us in the fall and seduced us in Fifty Shades of Grey. Now starring in the final part of the trilogy, Fifty Shades of Grey, is Jamie Dornan! Woo! I love you. I love you. Let me just see you. Hello, hello, hello. Have a seat, have a seat. And this man's career has spanned over four decades. Starring in films as diverse as Schindler's List and the action hit Taken. Now he's kicking ass again in The Commuter. It's the great Liam Neeson! <laughs> stage and screen, a true acting royalty. Now starring in new gothic horror Winchester, it's a warm welcome back to Dame Helen Mirren! <laughs> Yes, here we uh, are again. Welcome. Now, you, I like that you brought your own drink on. That was good. That was yeah. Well, they said I could. Yeah, no, please do. Please do. I mean, said, Liam's brought a flask of tea. <laughs> so. he says it's, <laughs> it's a long bus ride. <laughs> this is my little security blanket. <laughs> He's got sandwiches in a brown paper bag. Yeah. <laughs> Jamie, you pre ordered. Well done. I did. Uh, I've, I've learned my lesson. <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, Usually, when I, uh, you know, introduce the couch, I say, do you all know each other? Uh, but now, Jamie, you and I, bit gooseberry, because this is, I think, the first time we've ever had this, that you guys, you dated at one point. Yeah. Uh, Helen and I? Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes, darling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. We didn't date, we lived together. We lived oh, together, wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Four That's years. We were, yeah, we were, we were a, a, a serious item for a while, yeah. But I remember Kieran Hines and myself, we did this film Excalibur together. Yeah. 1980. Our first movie for all of us, really. That was wasn't it, it, really. We were, so, we were so green and ignorant about filmmaking. But I remember being out of the set, this was Ardmore Studios. Oh, in yeah. Dublin. And uh, Helen had a break. She was filming, but she was in costume. And we were there just visiting. We hadn't started work yet. And uh, the first AD or the second AD said, would you like to meet Helen Mayer? And I said, yeah, I'd love to. <laughs> so she walked from like 100 yards away, dressed in, as Morgana Le Fay. And Kieran's my oldest friend, and we both went, oh, fuck. <laughs> 
No, I was smitten. <laughs> I think Karen was smitten too. I was certainly smitten. I never smitten. knew that. You've <laughs> never told me that before. That's amazing. Oh! oh I've never told yeah. that before. Yeah, very good. <laughs> uh, and now, both from Northern Ireland, are you... Do you live really close to each other, or are you from... I, near... This is the first I've met them tonight. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're Ballymena. Yes. And you're Hollywood. Hollywood, yeah. With one L. With one L, yeah. Yeah, that, that's Hollywood. Yeah, yeah. not the... Yeah. <laughs> and I'm Ballymena with two L's. Yeah. <laughs> I, I should know this. And helen has been there, too. Oh, to Ballymena? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah, to Liam's house that he grew up in with... Um, five sisters? No, uh, three. Three sisters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, I remember that... <laughs> In this tiny little house, you know, yeah. and his three sisters and, and Liam, all six foot four of him, and it, yeah. it was just, it was amazing, absolutely amazing, wonderful, yeah. wonderful um, experience. But the Northern Irish actually, it was just voted uh, the sexiest accent in the world. <laughs> the Northern Irish. That's because of these two guys. Yeah, actually, it probably <laughs> is, to be fair. Yeah. No, but, that's not right. Couldn't be right. Yeah. <laughs> but as sexy as it is, I know that... Jamie, you, your daughter mocks you for something you... She does, yeah. Yeah, she's sort of <laughs> mocking me. Really pleased about that. <laughs> <laughs> just turned four and she's already mocking my accent. <laughs> I remember thinking it'd be nice if she says the odd word in an Irish accent, and it, but actually she... Well, there's a book that uh, we read her every night called um, uh, Bedtime Bear. And uh, it goes around, there's all these different animals that come out of places. There's a bison in a basin, and then there's um, an oil in a towel. My daughter is sort of like quite sort of posh in English, and, and she's like an owl in a towel. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then we go, say it like daddy, and she's amazing what she does. She goes, she goes an oil in a towel. <laughs> <laughs> now, we've got uh, three, three movies to talk about tonight. Uh, couldn't be more different. We've got horror, action, and, of course, sex. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> now, Helen's film, Winchester, Winchester. It's out on the 2nd of February. And uh, it's, a, it's a spooky, supernatural film, but what kind of makes it sound apart is this is true. It's a true story. It's... Well, it's a ghost story, and it's a ghost movie, and, but it's based on a true... And certainly the house exists, called the Winchester House. It was an extraordinary house built by this woman, Sarah Winchester, who the I'm playing, playing yeah. um, who inherited the huge, massive fortune from the sale of the Winchester rifle. And the legend was that she was building this really extraordinarily complex and weird house where you have stairways that go nowhere, you have doors in cupboards that lead secretly into other cupboards that lead into another room. It's just the most extraordinary place. Um, and the theory was that she built this um, to placate the ghosts of the people who were killed by the Win Winchester rifle. The first repeating rifle ever invented. Yes. Before that, it was having to load the musket, which would take, you know, two minutes before you could fire one more shot. Yeah. This was a repeating rifle. You could just, you know, shoot mm -hmm. ten people in, in a go. So, um, it was... Made famous, sorry, down by Jimmy Stewart, Winchester 73, yes, I right. think it was yes, called. Yeah. Yeah. And the... Yeah. But it's not just her. I mean, the people do claim this house is an incredibly haunted house and full of ghosts and things. Well, they do. You know, whether it is... <laughs> I, I felt... I, honestly, I felt being there... I don't know if I would have liked to have been there for the night with only a lighted candle kind of thing. But I felt... I felt the feeling in the house was one of... of um, uh, it was a nice feeling. It wasn't a nasty feeling. It, it wasn't an aggressive, violent, or... It, it was... It, there was a sweetness about it. Um, I mean, I do believe houses. I don't believe in ghosts, incidentally. Except I did think I saw a ghost on my wedding night, funnily enough, but... Oh, yes. <laughs> it wasn't my husband. OK. <laughs> it was the sheet but shifting. <laughs> it was a suit of armour. <laughs> Don't do it, Helen. Don't do it. <laughs> But part of the story is that they're trying to kind of see if you're mentally fit to run the company. They're trying to get the company off you. Yes, exactly. Yeah. That, that's our story that we tell, that uh, a, a psychiatrist is coming because they, want, they think she's gone mad. 
basically gone nuts and, and they want to wrest control of the company away from her. Well, this is the clip. This is the, it's the psychiatrist played by uh, Jason Clark, yes. and he's observing you uh, communicating with the spirits. Okay, everyone okay. <laughs> <laughs> Medics. Um, but mind you, talking of spooky supernatural things, I don't know if you've seen this. Uh, this photograph appeared on the internet. And you think, well, yes, it is a bit spooky, but, uh, <laughs> but, but not completely spooky. But then you go a little closer. You go a little closer, okay? <clears throat> and you think, oh, that is quite spooky. <laughs> Can anyone see what it is yet? Yeah, there's a face on that. Let's face. go a little closer. Let's go a little closer. Okay, if you, if you can't see it yet, we will help you graphically here. Oh! <laughs> it's, it's, it's Liam Neeson. <laughs> You're not the only person. You're not the only person to show up in unusual places. Please uh, tell me there's one of me. Please. <laughs> no. No. Okay. Actually, no. Liam's going to go there. Uh, this one. This one. Well, actually, there's one that could be you. Right. Uh, so uh, someone was making a salad, just chopping a pepper. They chopped it and then saw. Uh, can you tell me who that is? Do you know who that is? Um, it looks like a cartoon of um, uh, somebody yelling. No, it's it's a. A cartoon of. Um... It's not a cartoon, not... I'll tell you. I'll stop <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll show you. I'll show you. It, it is. Slimer. Uh... <laughs> well, then you. Oh, yes. It, well, particularly, in that, particularly in that picture, it's him, yeah. Not oh. really. Uh, this person kept on chopping, uh, chose an onion next, <laughs> chopped up the onion. <laughs> uh, that is, of course, Whoopi Goldberg. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Then someone was eating a, a cookie, very ordinary cookie, but look who's, <laughs> look who's in the cookie. It's none other than Sir Winston Churchill. <laughs> <laughs> now, some of them are pretty easy. Some of them are pretty easy. Like, obviously, uh, this walnut is Chewbacca. Well, yeah. uh, <laughs> now, some of them aren't so easy. Now, this one, uh, it's some damp on a wall. Now, this could be you, Jamie. That could be you. Yeah, well, that's... Yeah, Liam, that Helen, looks like me. Abraham Lincoln, actually. Oh, oh, that's a nice... Just, but does anyone want to guess who that's supposed to be? No, not Robert De Niro. I'll stop it. It's uh, that is what? That's a very good guess, but no. <laughs> Jean Claude Van Damme. Um, <laughs> funny. Uh, no, that's supposed to be David Beckham. That's I was about. A... No, oh, no, oh, no, he was about to say it. I didn't want to make a fool of myself. <laughs> Uh, I can't see any face in there whatsoever. There's Where's two the eyes, face? a nose, a mouth, some hair, and a lot of damp. Oh, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and finally, someone was walking along the streets of Paris, and they noticed the President of the United States. <laughs> uh, <laughs> good. OK. Liam Neeson's new movie, Thrills and Spills of Plenty. It's called The Commuter. It's out now. And, I mean, it's one of those movies, it's got it all. It's got action, suspense, thrills. A lot of it, it's been described as kind of having a, a feel of a Hitchcock movie. Yeah. Stephen King was very complimentary about it, wasn't he? Stephen King I, cost me a lot of money. <laughs> um, yeah, he was very complimentary. And, um, yeah, it's, a, it's called The Commuter. It's, I play an insurance salesman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who gets sacked from his job because he has reached the age of 60. He's mortgaged up to the hilt. He is a kid about to start college, and he's uh, uh, gets on the train to go back. This is set in New York to go back 
to upstate New York and, uh, to tell his wife, break the news, he has no job and stuff. And he is approached on the train by a very mysterious, attractive lady played by Vera Farmiga. I don't know if you know who oh, she yeah. is. Oh, yeah. Wonderful actor. Mm. To say, uh, would you do this little thing for a large sum of money, which is to find a passenger on this commuter train that doesn't belong and you have to find him or her before the train reaches the final destination. And it's one little thing. Would you do it? And I, my character accepts that, you know. And of course it leads to a whole labyrinth of a huge criminal conspiracy. And the strange thing is, of course, with movies, this train, the line that is based on, goes past my house, upstate mm -hmm. New York. I've been on this train maybe 80 times. And you must have thought, oh, how lovely, this is seven minutes from my house, five minutes from my house. <laughs> exactly. And uh, for tax reasons, they shot it on um, a sound stage in Pinewood. <laughs> and <laughs> and they, they, they built a carriage, a carriage and a half, and there's supposed to be seven oh, carriages. So, so um, those scenes, when you... Run the length of the train. That took like a week <laughs> yeah, to do that because we just had one carriage and then the. <laughs> the You'd never be out of breath, it was good. I mean, you didn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No wonder you look so fit going down that train. <laughs> and the art department cha slightly changed the, the, the carriage yeah. when you go home at night. So, you know, for three days you shouldn't carriage one. And then over the weekend, they alter the seating arrangement yeah, ever yeah. so slightly for it to be carriage three for when you get back to work <laughs> on Monday. So that's. And was there anything out the windows? Nothing. Uh, just green screen. Yeah. So that all happened in that post. That all happened yeah, yeah, afterwards. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, that, I mean, bearing that in mind, this is phenomenal. Well, uh, this is you in action. Uh, this is you being very annoyed with a fellow passenger. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you? Come down. Why are you following me? Are you the reason they're searching passengers? What do you know? Oh. It is amazing that that... Yeah. You know, I, I was once on a train with Liam, travelling from uh, Dublin to Belfast, and amazing thing was that he knew everybody on the train. <laughs> Is that an, I think it's a bit of an Irish thing, you know. I'd say it is. But it was like, oh, hi, how are you? Oh, how are you doing? How's your mum? <laughs> you know, oh, I, I saw your auntie, like, you know, a few months ago. <laughs> <laughs> Literally every person on the train he knew. So I think it was... <laughs> <laughs> Jamie, you have a thing, when you go back to Northern Ireland, you think people are coming up to talk to you. Yeah, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they want to talk about my dad. Yeah, my dad's an obstetrician, um, gynaecologist from home, and, and he's, uh, he's, delivered, he's delivered over 6,000 babies in, in North Ireland, which is a tiny place, so... Um, so almost a lot every of woman knows yeah, Almost him. every woman knows yeah. him. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I'll be in a pub or something, and someone will come up, and I'll be like, oh, this'll be nice. Like, fan of the fall or something. Yeah. <laughs> and then they'll be like, can I just say that your dad delivered me? Yeah. <laughs> Is that it? Is that it? Anything else? <laughs> no, that's it. <laughs> Talking yeah. of fa fans approaching <laughs> people, uh, after Taken, obviously you got a lot of fan attention and people coming up to you. Tell us a story about the... I think, were you in a, a gents or something? Yeah, I'd say it's happened a few times, actually. You're in a gents and uh, you're doing your business <laughs> and someone looks at you and you're up against the wall and you're, you know, doing your business. And someone starts quoting lines from the film. <laughs> and think, oh, fuck, if I hear this one more time. <laughs> and then they finish and they zip themselves up and they go, hey, damn. <laughs> <laughs> that's, 
that's the handshake of a man who's told to have that happen to him. Well, I've, had, I've had arguably worse. I've had a guy in a toilet where doing the business. I wasn't, do I wasn't doing the business with him. <laughs> we were peeing at the same time in the toilet, and uh, he was like, uh, oh, yeah, you're, you're a man. I was like, um, you're a man, yeah. He was, he had a lovely picture, and I was like, yeah, do you mind if we just wait? It's <laughs> like two minutes. He was, no, no, my wife will love it if we get it here. I was no, 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 no. no. Because actually, women are at an advantage, aren't they? Because no, we're at a huge disadvantage because we have to queue. Oh. Yes. And the worst thing is to be stuck in the queue, uh, you know, wherever at the in the airport or in the theatre or wherever it is. Yes. And you can't go anywhere, and you're you're just stuck there, you know. And then and then as word goes down the line that you're there, you, know? <laughs> you can't say, "Oh, I've changed no, my no, mind. Yeah. I don't need to go." I changed my mind. I go and <laughs> pee in the alleyway. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, Jamie Dornan's film, Fifty Shades Free, it opens 9th of February, and this is the third part. <laughs> uh, with the, with the set line, don't They're miss the climax. Jamie. They're all here. Yeah. Yeah. They're right there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <hi. laughs> we didn't do that on purpose. No, I like that. good. <laughs> they, they obviously just very aggressive and fought their way to the front of the queue. <laughs> 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 uh, so this, I mean, it is a phenomenon. This thing, the 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 trailer for this one came out, yeah. and <laughs> within hours, it's been watched by twenty six million people. The trailer, yeah. I mean, that's, that's incredible. Lunacy, has yeah, been is, yeah. It really is, <laughs> and, and, and of course, it must be odd because you finished this film a long time ago. You shot it at the yeah, same well, time. Yeah, we shot the second and third back to back. So um, you know, over a year and a half ago now, since we finished, so it sort of feels like a bit of a. It's in, it just feels in the past to me a, a wee bit, and yeah. we've all done. I had very busy schedule up until now, so it's kind of weird to be talking about it now. Yeah, I think. but here it is, and people want to see it. There they are. There. Yeah, yeah those, those people. Um, now uh, this isn't a spoiler because it's in the trailer. I've seen the trailer. Yeah. So in this one, Anastasia Steele, uh, she pregnant. She is a <laughs> child. <laughs> Did you, is that not, are you not in those Probably, scenes? Probably, yes, you definitely <laughs> I mean, God knows you've had enough sex. I mean... <laughs> it was only a matter of time. Yeah, well, she was meant to be, she was meant to be better about that. <laughs> oh, I see. Oh, wait. <laughs> There's meant to be things in place that meant that we didn't oh, have kids. Oh, OK. The other thing that was in the trailer that, that as, ooh, people have gone crazy for this, this is uh, Jamie's James Bond moment when he comes from the sea. Mm. Yeah, he is. It's like we paid you to make these noises. Uh, but now, so you left Vancouver. That isn't Vancouver, is it? That is definitely not Vancouver. No, that's in the south of France. Oh, lovely. Yeah, nice. lovely. And to be honest, we did that right at the end of the shoot after, you know, this whole sort of, you know, um, massive journey. And all the stuff in France was sort of jet skiing around and swimming and mucking about in bikes. And it was actually a bit of a holiday, to be honest. But that was horrendous. I mean, look, if they just tilted the camera down, that whole moment, it was... Awful. We had um, at the beach semi sort of closed off, but actually there was loads of people on there that we didn't have control over. And then it was a sunk, you know, a beach down here and a big wall and, and a street up there with hundreds of fans and, and paparazzi and all just trying to get shots because Dakota's <laughs> wearing a tiny wee bikini and I'm wearing whatever that clobber is. <laughs> and, I, and they so they have this whole thing. They want to be like sexy. You coming out of the water <laughs> and the whole James Bond thing. But it's, a, it's not a sand beach. It's one of those wee pebble oh, beaches. <laughs> I mean, you literally, ow, ow, we've all ow. been there. Like, you cannot look cool coming out of the water. I was mean, literally going like, I can't, guys. We did one take, and I was going... <laughs> <laughs> and they were like, uh, and all the paper off you. <laughs> okay, we're going to have to change something up here. Help me out. Yeah. So they put down, like, a wee carpet. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't really kind of work. It was kind of down, but they put rocks on it to try to keep it. I was still, so, but it was still like it wasn't like a platform and thing. It was still rocks underneath. And then I ended up wearing those little like sort of guppy shoe things. <laughs> <laughs> it was like those like gel shoes. <laughs> no one in the world has looked sexy in those. <laughs> um, and actually, I saw I had to see the movie last week to do press for whatever. And this whole thing, I mean, they used that as a still, but you don't, my exit from the thing isn't in, isn't in the movie. Oh! <laughs> oh! That might be a, a pretty crap spoiler. But yeah. 
<laughs> DVD extras. DVD yeah, yeah. extras. Yeah. Uh, let's watch a clip. This is yourself and Anastasia uh, discussing your relationship. Okay. You do want to have kids someday, right? Someday. Sure. You don't really sound sure. You know what I am sure about? Mm. That's great steak. Christian. Do you not want to have kids? Of course. One day, just not now. I'm not ready to share you with anyone. You know, I have to say, I love this guy from The Fall, which is a fantastic series. I can't watch those films because I made a movie with Dakota's mum <laughs> many years ago, and I used to swing Dakota round <laughs> at the age of two. Yeah. So I, can't, I just can't, I can't see her as, a, as an adult, think, so forgive uh, me, mate. I think I've swung her around a wee bit. <laughs> But now, even though this is the, the final film, yeah. this is the final film, uh, this is a bit of sort of sorry to support everyone, you still don't go fully nude. There's still no fully nude. Even on set, you didn't go fully nude. <laughs> it's true, you didn't go fully nude. So why are you saying it like that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, I think on set I was fully nude, but it wasn't part of the sort of creative process. <laughs> oh, I thought you, had, I thought you were, the costume department made sure you were not fully nude. Oh, I know where you're going. OK, so, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you guys have had to deal with this. You get these, we, you get like a modesty patch for women, like a little sort of strip that goes down there. And for guys, you get a wee pouch, like a... It looks like something Robin Hood would carry coins in. <laughs> <laughs> and it's got like a wee drawstring. <laughs> And on, on, on the first the first time we had to do a sex scene in Fifty Shades of Grey, the first movie, which is what four or five years ago now, and uh, um, I was like, oh, I've never had to wear one of these before, or whatever. Like, and they had a, in my trailer, they had a little like uh, display on the little <laughs> on a little like velvet box <laughs> with all these different, different, different all these different little pouches for your for your bits. Yeah, I know all all skin toned. <laughs> Uh, on, what, you different, know, sizes? different sizes? Different sizes, different sizes. Different sizes. You know, from small up to whatever. Um, so I, I, I picked one out and thought, let's oh, so try this on. <laughs> and lock my trailer door here. Uh, try this on. Oh, that feels all right. And then I took it off and went, I guess it's all right. And as I took it off, it had a little like stitch on the side that said, inmate number three. <laughs> Ooh. But it's clearly been used. Yeah. And, this is some other film where, like, some yeah. massive, like, prisoner has <laughs> <laughs> yeah. worn it. Um, but it was the one I was sort of most attached to, so I sort of... Um, I think I just, you know, grinned and bared it, really. Uh, Ooh. You, you have know, to grin and bear it. You do, you, you do. Can. Helen and I had a love scene. I don't think it's in Excalibur. No, they cut it out. They should put it back in. The we had like, a love scene. It'd be, like, historic now. Yeah. And I was in a suit of armour. And it was oh, cut no. out. It was cut out. And yeah. do you remember there was a huge eagle? They had a big eagle sitting on a perch. Big eagle, yeah. 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 Like a real yeah. eagle? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Was it a real one? Yeah, it was a real what, eagle. Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But, you uh, were obsessed with me at the time. Um, because, Ellen, you were then, of course, in one of those first kind of mainstream uh, kind of sexually explicit films, Caligula. Um, well, it wasn't really mainstream. I mean, w when it came out, it actually only played in triple X cinemas, which is interesting because now, and I remember doing an interview at the time saying, yeah, it's really shocking now, but I, I'm pretty sure that in 20 or 30 years' time, they'll be showing this this will be on, this kind of stuff will be on television. Yeah, and I was absolutely right because you mm -hmm. look at what's on television now, 
Um, but yeah, at, at the time, Caligula was out there, yeah. And is it true that this was the movie that your mother <laughs> chose to visit the set? My mum did visit the set. <laughs> she did, it, absolutely. <laughs> it was the kind of set where if you had clothes on, it was a little bit embarrassing <laughs> because like, nobody had any clothes on at all. Little, maybe little wisps of, of see-through blue silk or something. <laughs> And I remember my mum sitting there. She chatted, as you know, Liam, easily to anyone. And um, uh, she was sitting uh, on the set with these two enormous golden penises. You know, <laughs> you know it was ancient Rome. You know, so, you know. And she was sitting there on her little chair, and, and one of the extras, very sweetly, completely naked except for a little bit of blue stuff, came and sat next to her, and she was just chatting away to him. So what do you do? <laughs> oh, you're an extra. What is an extra? What do they do? <laughs> so what was she wearing? Oh, she was wearing, you know, nice, nice uh, English ladies' outfits. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what she was wearing. Probably a sort of knitted sweater from Mark Suspensers or something. Very nice. Proper. Um, yeah, very proper. <laughs> now, obviously, you know, Three sex symbols on our couch tonight, but uh, Jamie Dorn, oddly, it didn't. You you arrived at sex symbol status quite late in life. Did yes. So uh, tell us a story about. Uh, I think you were what were you about fifteen? This is one of the worst stories in my locker. <laughs> um, and I've, I've on packet. Deb big debates about whether I should tell it, but fuck it. Um, <laughs> when I, I was this actually had a big effect on me as a kid. It has a big effect on I'm sure lots of lots of kids. But I was. Very sporty when I was a kid, but I was a late developer. I was small, you know, I, I wasn't very hairy. I was just one of those guys who just wasn't, you know, I was a bit behind and I was young for my year and that had a big effect on me or whatever. Anyway, uh, I was sort of balancing playing rugby at school and, and doing a bit of amateur dramatics on the side. And uh, it also culminated in, we got the final Liam on this of the medallion shield, which when you're 15 is the biggest thing could happen. And uh, I went to school called Methody, and we were playing Inster, our main rivals, at Ravenhill, which is Ulster's ground. And it was a, such a massive thing, there was going to be a big party afterwards. And, uh, but also that same night befell the, the, the All-Ireland final of the you know, Amateur Dramatic Society, where, where I, was, <laughs> I was in uh, performing uh, Chekhov's The Cherry Orchard. Um, and I think I was a waiter or something. I was on stage a lot, but didn't really have any lines, didn't have anything to say. And... I thought, right, I'll be able to go play rugby, hopefully win that, and then go and do the play, and then go to the party for the rugby afterwards. Now, I was 15, I looked about seven. Um, <laughs> I, um, I had no hair or anything. And anyway, in the play, they'd given me this sort of black, very acrylic, highly flammable wig that they used to cut off and yoo-hoo to my face to give me, <laughs> to give me a beard, yeah. to give the appearance I was yeah. older. So I thought... It would be a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> after we, after we, the curtain came down on this play, um, and I'm going to this party after, and you know, I might meet a girl, and maybe she drops a hand. <laughs> 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 so I had the idea to, to maybe cut off some extra hair off the very. <laughs> By the way, I was a very fair child. I had long hair. <laughs> So I went into the, the, the dressing room, I went into like the toilet and like cut off all this very curly <laughs> jet, jet black hair. <laughs> I put it in a wee pile and got my yoo glue and just <laughs> <laughs> kicked it around there, stuffed it in. I remember standing in front of the mirror going, that looks all right. <laughs> the lengths you go to. Anyway, obviously, went to the party. I think I kissed a girl that was sort of really ur urging her to sort of, you know, without forcing her. <laughs> urging her to sort of go down, because on this one, for one night only, <laughs> it's actually quite an impressive place to put your hand. Um, anyway, that didn't happen, and actually, thank God it didn't, because I got home, it was a car crash down there. <laughs> 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 Was the removal painful? I'll tell you why the removal was so like painful, physically and emotionally. I did actually, I did actually have about three pubes, natural, natural, yeah. naturally developed pubes. Mm, mm. They went as soon as yeah. I. <laughs> so, yeah. What an 
the image. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that story. Well, <laughs> welcome to the world of waxing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, right. <laughs> it's music time. Uh, it is. It's music time. This singer-songwriter is one of the most exciting pop stars at the moment and has just won BBC Music Sound of 2018. Here performing her newest hit, Strangers, please welcome Seagreed! <laughs> Just yeah, to watch you come out and go bash, just do that. It was wonderful, absolutely <laughs> wonderful. Uh, that's Strangers. That uh, single is out now. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, but listen, we must talk about the wonderful prize, the BBC Music Sound of 2018. And this is a, a big deal, this, this, I mean, it is, I mean... <laughs> yeah, it's quite cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, because, I mean, uh, uh, Sam Smith has won it, 50 Cent, uh, Adele. Mm. And Adele, now, what, she plays a part in your story somehow. Well, yes. Um, so, Adele is probably one of my favourite artists, and I think the chorus in Rolling in the Deep, the vocal hook in that one, is probably the biggest reason for me making pop music. I think so, yeah. Okay. I'm a huge fan. So, what, you <laughs> heard that and thought, I'll have a bit of that. <laughs> yeah, well, yes. It, yeah. It, yeah. It's cool. And this year is going to be a huge year for you, isn't it? It's a lot of travelling, yeah. yeah. It's very exciting. Yeah. Are you kind of focusing on Europe? Are you in America as well? Um, we're trying to do like all over. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's really cool. I'm going to Australia for the first time. Hopefully, I'll see some kangaroos. That's my like one of my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> you will. Dream bigger. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm mostly dead, unfortunately. Yes. But knocked over by cars. Yeah. Yeah, roadkill essentially. Road kill. <laughs> Don't forget to eat. Eat. And get your rest. Yeah. yeah, no, yes. thank you. I there am. Yeah. There we go. Well, that's very nice. Yeah. I am, I, I am going home tomorrow, actually. Okay. So, there's oh, yeah. time for that. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> when you're 35, you can start eating well and resting. Yeah. <laughs> Till then, just go wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, I'm so thrilled for you. That's a beautiful song. Uh, <laughs> I, I, if the album's as good, it's going to be great. And uh, congratulations on the award. Uh, Sigrid, everybody. <laughs> uh, that's uh, nearly it for tonight. But before we go, time for a visit to that big red chair. Who's there? Hi, what's your name? I'm Jamie. Jamie, yeah. lovely. And where are you from, Jamie? I'm from Australia. You, oh, yeah. he's from Australia. Good oh, yes. Oh, That's well, you must swap numbers. <laughs> <laughs> you can stay in his house. Uh, do you, uh, uh, do you live here at the moment? Um, no, I'm on holiday. Oh, you're on, ho on an actual holiday? All right. Yeah. And what do you do back in Australia? I am a film student, so... Hey. Oh, oh yeah. wow. I'll keep you three in mind. <laughs> <laughs> What are we, chopped liver secret? <laughs> uh, okay, off you go with the story, Jamie. All right, so this is my fifth, fifth birthday. Um, everyone's giving me some presents. My dad's shitting himself because he's forgotten to get me a present. So thinking on his feet, he looks out the window and sees a pigeon. Um, so he brings me over to the window, points to the pigeon, and tells me that is my pigeon. Um, <laughs> so being five, I believe every word of it. So, but everyone else, they're like, what are you doing? <laughs> But I'm very happy with this pigeon. So they kept up his lie for six years. And I, every time we were out and about, when we saw a pigeon, that was my pigeon. Oh, 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 very cute. Even more. Even more. Yeah. 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 That's a sweet story. He doesn't sound very Australian. No, he doesn't. He doesn't sound Australian. No. I'm sorry. Very posh. Yeah, but quite posh yes. Australian. Yes. That was a pigeon on their estate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Okay, let's have a look. Hello, hello! Hello! Hi, what's your name? Isabel. Isabel, lovely. And where are you from, Isabel? Uh, I'm from Devon, but I'm living in London. Are you? Yes. Ooh. <laughs> and what do you do in London, Isabel? Um, I'm a student. So. Of? Uh, French and history. French and oh. history, yeah. both of those. Sure, madame. I do one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, you're really very good. Uh, and, and what do you want to do when you graduate? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was a silly question. <laughs> <laughs> your, your parents have just thrown the television out the window. <laughs> I, I won't press you. Uh, off, you, off, you off you go with the story. Okay, so I was very hungover one morning and I had a very early shift at a uh, fast food kind of place. So I was quickly getting ready, I put my jeans on. I heard some funny sound, I thought, oh, it'll just be my zip. Did my usual 30 minute <laughs> commute. Um, so I get into work and my coworker just goes to me, Izzy, you, you know you've got a hole in your trousers? And I was like, yeah, yeah, it's just a small one. He goes, no, 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 Izzy, you've got a hole. I put my hand down and all I can feel is bare skin because my trousers have ripped from my ass all the way down to my thigh and I'm standing there butt naked in front of everyone in the kitchen, all my co-workers and everyone in the restaurant. So I completely panic, um, 
I run into the kitchen to try and get back upstairs, but I walk into the grill, <laughs> so I burn the entire of my <laughs> bum on the hot grill, trying to escape without any trousers on oh. and have to spend the rest of the day in uh, chef's trousers. Oh, oh. Do you want, should we walk for that? I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can walk if you can. Uh, yes, yeah. there you go. Yes, her shift manager must want to put a hairnet on that. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, should we have another one? Okay, what? Well, yeah, one more. Go on, squeeze one more in. Go on. Hello. Hi. Hi. What's your name? Angus. Angus, lovely. And uh, what do you do, Angus? Uh, sales. 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 <laughs> okay. It's not pushing it right now. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, what sort of do you, what, what sort of things do you sell? Uh, gyms. Gym. You sell. Gym equipment or actual gyms? N neither, really. <laughs> in, in, this was a mistake. It was a, a terrible mistake. People I don't know. Uh, well done, everyone. If you'd like to join us on the show and have a go in the red show, you can contact us via our website at this very address. And that is it for tonight. Please say a huge thank you to all my guests. Sigrid! <laughs> Jamie Dornan! singer Coloma Faith, actor Simon Pegg and Rebecca Ferguson, Superman Henry Cavill and Hollywood megastar Tom Cruise. I'll see you again everybody. Bye bye. At 9.30 tomorrow evening here on BBC One, the twisting drama Hard Sun takes an even darker turn as a killer sets his sights on the good people of London. Back to tonight and in a moment, life in Platinum Whitbro has its benefits for some. Witless, the brilliant comedy from BBC Three, next. <laughs>